So there's this particular case that's going to be heard in Washington, D.C. It's about January 6th. There's like 300 plus people that are in jail. You may have heard of this, the Fisher case, right? It has to deal with a very specific law and uh, it, a very specific law, basically, that came around during the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. And it was a statute aimed primarily at prohibiting or attacking white collar crime, but they're using it because basically it says that you can't interfere with any kind of congressional procedure. And so they're arguing that these protesters on J6, well, what did they do? They interfered. It, well, some people are saying, you know, maybe this is too broad an interpretation of this particular law. And so the question becomes, can the government charge defendants in these cases under a federal law that makes it a crime to corruptly obstruct an official congressional proceeding. I mean, forget about Jamal Bowman. What was that? You know, the, the fire alarm guy pulling the fire alarm so he could prevent an official official congressional proceeding when they were supposed to be voting on the budget. Yeah, you know, he can do that, but you can't show up to person. Look, I, I'm not like justifying any of this. I'm just saying that you have to you have to understand the full context, right? And so. I don't know what the Supreme Court's going to decide. They may say, you know what? This law exists and it exists for a reason. And because of this, all of those people and Donald Trump are in big, 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 big hot water, right? Like they are going to be just shut down. Or the Supreme Court could say, you know what? They're way out over their skis on this. Jack Smith and his whole team, they are doing this for political reasons only. And this is not what this law was intended to do. Now, if they do that, well, then you're going to have quite a you-know-what storm. And the reason you're going to have a you-know-what storm is because you will have just had a decision, most likely in the spring of 2024. I mean, the, the trial is scheduled for D.C. Jack Smith is supposed to be presenting this to a D.C. court March 4th of 2024. And now the Supreme Court says they're going to take this up, which means their decision is likely going to come out in June of 2024. Do you see the collision course that we're on? It's something that was noted by some analyst. I can't even remember this guy's name. I'd actually never really seen him much ever before. I guess he was at Daily Beast or something. That's probably why I, I, didn't, I hadn't seen him before. But he's now in his Plum TV gig and listen to this nonsense that he's spotting. Hey, last I checked, we have a Supreme Court for a reason. Do we not? Let's cue this one. The moral implications, the constitutional implications are massive for our country. Because as you have pointed out, you know, without accountability, uh, an attempt to overturn an election, a slow motion coup is just practice. It's a green light if there's no accountability for this. And the implications uh, down the line are striking, right? I mean, you know, for example, if people at the Supreme Court or a court should say that the a president's not criminally liable for anything he did when in office, well, that's a green light for authoritarian action for people when they're president. They're officially and permanently above the law, not just simply because of an Office of Legal Counsel opinion. It, it, was that it? Do we have any more? <laughs> no, what will happen, what I but it's possible, at this. least possible, this case yeah, never gets, gets heard. Gets How then should one look upon the decision by Merrick Garland, who waited to launch a, a special counsel investigation until after the January 6th committee did a year's worth of work on this? Badly. And look, I think Merrick Garland was motivated by a desire to seem above politics, right? To try to not see the have the Justice Department perceived as being politicized, which it had been under uh, Donald Trump. I think the difficulty now is that time is finite and delay can be denial. And that's what Donald Trump has, has predicated upon with his army of lawyers. I'm remembered of something truly chilling that Peter Thiel once said, which is single digit millionaires can't avail themselves okay. of the legal system. So bottom line here, what he's setting up is a situation where maybe the Supreme Court decides in favor of Donald Trump and the 300 people that are locked up. And if that happens, this analyst guy is saying, oh, you know, then, you know, the, you, you've broken down all the hatches, right? Like that is Pandora's box because now the Supreme Court is effectively okaying a coup. Or, you know what, they interpret the law so that they will look at what happened and say, actually, it wasn't really a coup. And actually... We, we don't think now I, I don't know because you know what I wasn't there and I didn't get to go into the Capitol building on that day and I don't have any video from inside the Capitol building of that day 
other than what Nancy Pelosi's daughter, Alexandra, a documentary film producer, literally sold to CNN, who then billed it as their exclusive. So there was no independent news network inside. There are cameras. They wouldn't let us see the footage. Our new Speaker of the House says he's going to release it all because we've got like 42,000 hours of this stuff. And as long as they can secure the location and make sure that that doesn't become overly public, then you know what? They're going to move forward with that because, hey, I would like to have seen what was going on inside. I saw outside. It wasn't pretty. Donald Trump has talked about this. He said he wanted to go over there. He tried to go over there. Secret Service wouldn't allow him. They said it wasn't safe. And so he didn't make it over there. He wanted to calm things down. And Nancy Pelosi, on the other hand, I, I still don't understand. And I said it at the time, and you have to be careful saying this, right? Because everybody's so sensitive. But gosh darn it, why didn't she pick up the phone and call the Capitol Hill police? Why was the first phone call when she knew this was coming? And they're like, oh, you know, we don't want to go after the protesters. People don't like it when we go after protesters. Look, we let all those BLM movements happen. We got to let this happen. I'm sorry, like it's happening at the Capitol building. So no, you just don't let this happen. You do have more people like the National Guard called in. You do make that phone call to the appropriate people so that you have the police presence, the FBI presence, whatever the heck presence you guys need, you make sure that you have it. It's not open season unless maybe you wanted it to be because when your first phone call is to your documentary film producing daughter who then treats it as news and then they have those hearings and that's all we see over and over and over and over again. You know what? That's a problem. That's a bias. So I don't know. I don't know the full extent of any of this, but I sure as heck hope that we get the opportunity through these legal procedures to learn more. And I'm sorry, but you know what? We got a system that's set up with the Supreme Court as the ultimate power. They are the Supreme Court, okay? Like the word supreme is in there. They're gonna have say over this, whether the CNN guy and the rest of them like it or not. So if you then wanna challenge that, then guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Some of the lefty publications made fun of me for saying this a few years back, but you're going to be looking at a Civil War type scenario. I mean, I hope to goodness, not certainly not like actual, but you, you will see this divide. And maybe it becomes such a severe political divide that you, you really do have a shift and a change. I don't know, but I don't like it when I hear lefties talking about how the Supreme Court cannot be or should not be the final rule because then somehow that's green lighting a coup. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Last I checked, again, the Constitution was set up in this representative democracy in such a way that we have respect and we honor the law of the land, which the Supreme Court can rule on.